Happy Sunday, guys. Welcome to day six of my 12 days of carry. So this is what I wore to church today. I just had my black pants, my black bodysuit, that's from Amazon, I'll link it below. It's long sleeve and really thick, good quality. And then my thigh holster over my pants with a pair of boots. Because I wore it over my pants, I wanted it tighter. So I tightened the thigh holster by one row of clasps and that was enough to keep it up on my leg. Normally it sticks to your skin and it sticks a lot better. So because I wore it over my pants, I wanted it a little tighter just so it didn't fall down. But I love my thigh holster. I wear this a lot with dresses in the summertime and in the winter when I wear a dress. But I figured I would try it with a long sweater because it covers it all. Like this is basically a dress. And then it's a really easy drop because it's just right on your leg. And I think that this is super comfortable. I mean, it's going to be dependent on your body type, whether or not it's going to be comfortable for you. You can also wear it on the outside of your other leg. That usually works better if you have something more flowy. But let's try it with this sweater. Turn it so that the grip is facing back a little more. It's up to you, but I love this thigh holster. It has silicone, this is, I just flipped it inside out. It has silicone strips on the top and bottom, just like my favorite belly band, so it sticks to you. And then two pockets, so you can carry on the inside or outside of your thigh. And then there's another pocket in the middle that you can put an extra magazine, a knife, a flashlight, whatever you want, a pepper spray. I'll link this below. This is by Can Can Concealment. All right guys, since it's Sunday, it's gonna be family day, so I'm not gonna be filming my whole day, but I did wanna answer some questions that you guys had for me. I left a question box on my Instagram that you guys could ask me questions, and I got a bunch of good ones. So we're gonna answer those, um, but first, I want to open today's advent calendar. This is the Gun Girl Advent Calendar by Armed and Style. So today is day six. Let's open that box and see what we have today. I love this, it's like a, surprise every day. All right, let's see what we have here. Ah, oh, okay. So it's this gold plated bracelet here of a little gun. Looks like a Glock. And it's the kind that looks like this in the back. Let's take it out and we'll put it on. So this matches the necklace from day one. I've got Mila under me. She's got her head on my leg. <laughs> I think she wants to go for a W-A-L-K. Very dainty little bracelet. That's beautiful, love it. We've got a couple big ones in here. I'm curious to see what's in there. Day 11 and day 12 are two big boxes, but we'll get there. All right, let's get started. If you could have one gun for the rest of your life for CCW, which one is it and why? If I had to choose one, I'm gonna go with the Glock 42. I initially thought the shield, but if I could only choose one, Sometimes the shield is a tad too big, so I have to carry something smaller. And though I carry the Ruger 380, the LCP Max, sometimes I'll carry the Glock 42, which I shoot very well, and it's really easy to conceal. So I'm gonna go with the Glock 42 if I had to choose just one. And that was, I could only have one, that would be the one. How old were you when you first started training to fire a weapon? The first time I ever shot a gun was when I was 18 years old. It was like right at the end of high school and my sister, my oldest sister took me shooting. Um, so I was 18, never touched a gun before that, never even thought really about shooting before that. So 18. And in my office here in the corner, I actually have my first two targets from when she took me shooting. I've got the date on them. It's July 4th, 2006. So it was the 4th of July. But those are my first targets. I frame them and I can look at them from my desk, which is kind of cool. Okay, next question. Is the Ukoala bag more obvious because of the thigh strap? I feel like people would be looking at me. My thoughts on this is that like, I live in Massachusetts and Massachusetts is not a very gun friendly state. And I feel like guns aren't even on most people's radar. Like they wouldn't think that I'm carrying a gun. So, I don't think that people would think that there's a gun in that bag because they just don't ever think about stuff like that here. 
Um, maybe it would be different somewhere else, but I'm not really worried about that at all. How did you get so comfortable carrying for the first time? So I had kind of a tough time with concealed carry in the beginning because I wasn't allowed to do it, <laughs> which was kind of a blessing in disguise because it gave me time to become comfortable with the thought of carrying a gun. So my first firearms license was in the city of Boston in Massachusetts. And Boston's very much not a gun friendly place. So they restrict most firearms licenses. Like I was taking classes, learning more about concealed carry and wearing, like trying on holsters even though I couldn't carry my gun outside. I would practice with holsters in my house, see what I liked, and I was kind of prepping myself mentally for that lifestyle change of carrying a gun. And um, in my Armed and Confident Academy, my online course, we talk about getting comfortable with carrying a gun. It's all about the lifestyle of concealed carry and getting you comfortable and educated so that you feel prepared to carry a gun. But in that course, I go over a process on how to get yourself comfortable with carrying. And part of that is just like trusting your gear. And if that means you have to carry a holster without a gun in it for a while, so be it until you're comfortable. Then maybe carry without a round in the chamber for a little bit. I wouldn't recommend that as a long-term strategy. And then once you're comfortable with that, you trust your holsters, etc. then carry with a round in the chamber. At what point in the dating phase is it okay to let them know you carry? <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting question. I'd say as soon as you feel like you can trust them. Would I bring it up on a first date? I don't know. I didn't have this problem with Mac because we met because of guns. So we didn't have that issue. I mean, I feel like I would tell them pretty early on just because it's such a big part of my life. Um, and so that they know not to mess with me. But I think that's a personal choice. If there's someone who's like very anti-gun, I feel like that would be a problem. Especially if they're trying to tell you that you can't carry around them. That would definitely be a problem. But if you feel comfortable around that person, then I don't see why you should wait. And if they're nervous about it, go on a date to the range. That's always fun. I was taught a phone should be opposite of your gun for easier access. Have you heard that? Yes, I have. If you have to draw your gun and you're holding it and you need to also call 911, you can't do that with the same hand, obviously. So having your phone in your left pocket where you can get to it with your left hand, if you're righty, is a good idea. And vice versa. Okay, I've got a question from a guy here that says, how do I get my significant other to start to consider concealed carrying? Ultimately, it's gonna be their decision whether or not they carry a gun. You should never like force someone into that because they might not be ready. I do have a video up here all about getting the women in your life more comfortable with the thought of carrying a gun or with the thought of guns to begin with. So check that out if you want a little bit of advice. But like I said in the previous question, take them on a range date. I feel like most people are scared of guns because they don't know. So if you can teach them safety first so that they feel comfortable and safe around guns, um, that's going to be a huge step because education is the antidote to fear. Has anyone recognized you in public from being on YouTube and Instagram? Yes, this has happened a few times. Uh, the first time was actually in Vermont, which was weird. Mac and I were at a gas station and someone recognized us. Um, but yes, it has happened before. If you see me out in public, feel free to say hi because I love meeting you guys in person. What's one thing you've always wanted to do in your lifetime that hasn't been accomplished? That's a good question. This is something really random, but there's a telescope in Hawaii. It's one of those like huge telescopes. And I don't remember which island it's on, but it's very dark there. And you can go there, it's like an observatory, and you can look through the telescope. I really wanna do that. I'm kind of a space nerd, so that's, that's high up on my list. Oh, and I would love, this is kind of a new, a new goal of mine, a new bucket list item. I would love to do like the Israel Jesus tour, like see all the places he went, like go to the Sea of Galilee. That would be really cool. It's a long-term goal. Hopefully someday I'll be able to get to see that stuff. Have you ever been put in a position to draw your gun since you've been carrying? No, thank God. I hope I never ever have to draw my gun. I almost had to pepper spray someone once. They were drunk. I didn't have to pepper spray them, but that was the closest I ever got to pepper spraying someone. Hopefully I'll never have to use any of those tools, but I'm glad that I carry them just in case. What's your workout routine? Currently, it's nothing. I honestly haven't been to the gym in months, which feels horrible, and I really wanna get back into it, and I know it's so cliche to start working out in January, but I think I'm gonna, because I love 
going to the gym and lifting weights that's like it's almost therapeutic for me I just really have to make time for it but maybe after these 12 days pass um, I'll get back into the gym I know it's important what is your current favorite belly band my favorite belly band is by can can concealment I wore it on day one I think it was day one of these 12 days of Christmas this is the thigh holster they make, but it's basically the same material. It has silicone on the inside, so it sticks to you. And um, best belly band for running, for just day to day. I love Can Can Concealment. I'll link them below. They make men's and women's styles, so guys, you can wear them too. I just got into firearms, and I don't know how to tell my parents. Parent? I never grew up with firearms. I didn't either. And you don't have to tell them. I mean, that doesn't have to be something you share with them if you really don't feel like you need to. <laughs> that can just be something that you do and they mm -hmm. don't have to know about it. If you feel like they'd be uncomfortable with it, unless you live in their house. If you live in their house, then you might want to clue them in on the fact that you do have guns in the house. Because if something ever happens and they like get access to your gun somehow, which they shouldn't, but if they do, you don't want them to get hurt. So. If you live with them, you might want to consider telling them. I would offer the same advice I gave earlier. Educate them. Some people, most people are afraid of guns because they just don't know about them. All they know about guns is what they've seen on TV um, and in the media and in movies. So ask them if they want to learn. Take a safety class with them. If they're uncomfortable, say, I'll sign up for this class with you. We can go together. It could be something fun you do with your parents, and they'll also gain some knowledge and probably be more comfortable with the idea of guns if you take a class with them. So I think that would be fun. You could take a class together and be respectful of their opinions because they're your parents. I think if you like sit down with them and have a chat and tell them why it's important to you, why you value this, then it'll make them more likely to be understanding of this new lifestyle change. What are your recommendations for someone that struggles with recoil anticipation? So Mac and I did a video, I'll link that one up here, where we talk about hitting what you're aiming at. And, and in that video, we go over some drills that might help you out. So check out that video right here. You should start out with smaller calibers and work your way up but that doesn't mean that you'll never have to deal with recoil anticipation. So check out that video. We go over some drills that might help you out. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna go spend time with my family for the rest of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed day six of my 12 days of carry and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Stay safe, bye.